Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at setting up PS2 on RetroArch. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, if you're looking at playing PS2 games on your PC, you have two different options. The first option is a standalone program called PCSX2. I've done a few videos on this and I'll leave one in the description below if you want to check out the individual program. If you're using RetroArch, there's also a PCSX2 core. Now to get started with RetroArch, head over to RetroArch.com. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below. Once you're here, you'll want to click on Get RetroArch. This will bring you to the Downloads page. The Downloads page should automatically detect your operating system. It's automatically detected. I'm using Windows here, and I can go ahead and click Download Stable. Now, if for some reason your detected operating system is not showing up, just scroll down the page a little bit and manually download the program. Just click on the link that corresponds with the operating system you're using. For the purposes of this video, we'll be taking a look at Windows 10 and I want to take a look at the installer for the 64-bit version, which is 163 megabytes. Once it's done downloading, open up the installer and install RetroArch. It's a pretty straightforward process. There is one option here. If you're a little bit unsure, just make sure it's checked, and this makes sure you have DirectX 9.0 installed, which RetroArch kind of needs. Installation time will vary based on the PC that you have, and there are two different installs here. There's the RetroArch install and the DirectX 9.0 install. In some cases, Cases, you might notice that your RetroArch install isn't completing, and that might be because you have to click on the taskbar and bring up the Microsoft DirectX install box. It opens up sometimes just in the taskbar and not on your desktop, so just go on ahead and click it and bring it up. There is something I want to point out here. So if you do accept this license agreement, click Next uncheck install the Bing bar. Trust me, you do not want this. But I guess on the other hand, maybe you're the type of person who wants the Bing bar and maybe you would also want something like the Yahoo bar and a whole bunch of other plugins on your browser to completely ruin your browsing experience. Who am I to judge? Anyways, for me, I'm not installing the Bing bar at all and I don't necessarily recommend it at all either. From here, I'm going to click next. Now for playing PS2 on PC, you will also need to provide your own BIOS files. This goes for both PCSX2 and RetroArch. If you don't know what BIOS files are, just Google PS2 BIOS Wiki and it should be the first link here. There's some really good information. If I scroll down to PS2, it shows me what BIOS files are. Interestingly enough, when I clicked on the PS2 BIOS link, it brought me to a page here with a big blue button that says download 172.7 megabytes. Hmm. The next thing we'll have to do is download the official PCSX2 binaries. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below. It's the official PCSX2 website. The download page, the binaries are on the very bottom here. Just click on the blue button on the far right and download those binaries. They're 6.2 megabytes. The next step is to extract the binaries. It's a seven zip file. If you don't have the ability to extract it, I do have a tutorial video in the description below and I'll link it as well so you can install seven zip. Once you're done extracting the binaries folder, open it up. And from here we want to click new folder. We're going to create a BIOS folder inside the binaries folder to place our new BIOS files. I did not spell that right. So I'm just going to correct my spelling here <laughs> to type in BIOS. So I'll open this up and I'll extract my BIOS in this folder. Just a side note here, make sure your BIOS files are not zipped up. You will have to fully extract them in this folder. Once they're fully extracted, go back to the PCSX2 1.6.0 folder and open up PCSX2. From here, click Next. And from here, you don't really need to change anything just yet. Just click Next from here. The next step is to select the BIOS you want to use. If you have one BIOS file, then there's only gonna be one BIOS in here. If you have a bunch, then you'll have a bunch of different BIOS files to select. I'm just going to select USA version 2.3. From here, I'm going to close out of all of this and then move this file into RetroArch. To do this, head over into your RetroArch folder wherever you installed it. Scroll down to where it says System and then drag the entire PCSX2 1.6.0 folder here. Once the file's here, make sure to rename it to PCSX2. Just delete all the numbers after the name. Next, boot up RetroArch and from this menu, we'll configure our controller. So what I'm going to do is just click on Settings on the left-hand side, go down into Input, and from here, I'm going to scroll down and click on port 1 controls. In this video, I'm using an 8-bit Doe Pro 2, and it's got all the buttons required for PlayStation 2 games. Make sure that your device is being picked up, and to do that, go to Device Index here and select the proper controller. 
my 8 Pro 2 is being registered as an Xbox 360 wired controller, and that's A-OK -okay with me. In device type, make sure to select Retro Pad with Analog, and that'll enable the analog sticks on your controller. After you're done mapping your controls, click Save Controller Profile. Once you've saved your controller profile, hit the backspace to bring you back to the main menu. From the settings menu though, there is something else I want to change. I'm going to go up to drivers here and change where it says video from GL to Direct3D11. And this is because it works better with PCSX2. Back on the main menu here, I'll click load core. From here, I'm going to select download a core. If I scroll down to the bottom of the page here, I can get down to Sony PlayStation 2. There are two different cores for PS2 and only one I currently recommend. So let's take a look here as soon as I get down. There's quite a bit of cores here. Uh, Sony PlayStation 2, there we go. So PlayStation 2 Play, this is a fairly new core and I don't recommend it just yet. When I do recommend it, I'll do a video on it and post it to my channel. But for this video, we're just gonna focus on PCSX2, considering all of the setup we just did was for this core. Once you've clicked it, hit backspace, it'll bring you back to this menu here and then you can open up the PlayStation 2 core. The next step here, and this is just a matter of personal preference, I like to make sure that everything I've done is working correctly before I go and try a game out. So what I'm going to do is just click start core. From here, you can see that pretty much everything is working okay, except for one thing, and that's the text. So this is definitely not the BIOS that I selected because this isn't in English, but that's a pretty easy fix. So I'm gonna hit F1 here to bring up the menu, scroll down to where it says options, and then from here it says BIOS. So it selected the wrong BIOS file. Let's just select a USA one and I should be good to go. I'll have to restart the core, but then it should bring up English. There are two ways to get back into the main menu of RetroArch. One is just to close the program or two, you press F1 and then press the backspace key and that brings you back to the main menu. If you accidentally crash RetroArch or exit it, it's not really a big deal, just open it back up. From here, we're gonna go down to load content and select the game we're trying to play. Now you have to locate the ROMs folder on your computer wherever your PS2 ROMs are located. For me, it's in C colon and PS2 ROMs, and I have one game I'm gonna try out. It's Capcom versus SNK2. So what I'll do is I'll click on this game here. It should automatically load up RetroArch considering I already have the core ready to go. From here, everything is up and running and everything looks absolutely fine. The next step I'm going to do is tweak some settings. So if the game isn't running well for you, or if you just want to improve some graphics or try some different things out, all you have to do is just press F1 to bring up the main menu. From here, scroll down to where it says options and we can change a few different things. If your games aren't running smoothly, then we can tinker around with a few things. And the first thing I would recommend is checking on your renderer. So if you remember earlier on, we set it manually in RetroArch to Direct3D11. If that is not the case, then you can set it here. It's currently set to auto, but you can manually force it to Direct3D11. If that doesn't work, you can try OpenGL, you can even try software. If you're still running into some slowdowns, you can click on frame skipping here and turn it on. It's set to off by default. You should see an immediate improvement, and if you don't, just try increasing frames to skip from 1 to 2, or maybe even bump it up to 3. This should hopefully help. To make your games look a little bit nicer, you can go down into the internal resolution here. By default, it's set to native PS2. You can crank it up all the way up to 5K if you want. The more you crank it up, the more taxing on your system it will be. For me, I'm just gonna set it down to three times native here at 1080p. And just like that, my game is up and running and everything looks absolutely fine. If you wanna monitor how your game is running though, if you wanna see if it's running exactly at full speed, you'll have to enable the FPS. And the easy way to do that is to press F1 and bring up the main menu. From here, press backspace. From here, go to the settings menu, scroll down the page a little bit to where it says on-screen display, then scroll down to on-screen notifications, notification visibility, and display frame rate. Just turn that on. So now on the top right hand corner of the screen, we can see the active frame rate. And for me, it's relatively stable. It's hovering just around 60, and that's absolutely fine. If you see the frame rate bouncing all over the place, you're probably running into some issues emulating a certain game. If it's hovering around the same number, maybe up and down one or two numbers, that's absolutely fine. For example, if it's 60, but it bounces down to maybe 57 or 58, 
that's absolutely fine and probably pretty normal. So back in game here, I'm jumping around. Everything is holding pretty steady, which means to me that this computer is emulating this game without any issues. Now, emulating PS2 on RetroArch is not the easiest or the most straightforward process out there. I'm pretty sure the team behind RetroArch, Libretro, is working hard behind the scenes to make this a little bit more straightforward and to optimize things a little bit and make it a lot more seamless. As it stands, I recommend the standalone program of PCSX2. I've got a tutorial video in the description below. It's more straightforward, it's easier to do, and to me, it just works better. Now, if there are any changes to this process, any improvements, I will do another video and I'll pin it in the top comments below. But anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts of PCSX2 on RetroArch in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care. So I'll hit enter here for Capcom versus SNK2 and it crashed my system.